And of course, we're gonna take the sculpt and paint section towards this guy, the big Kong uh, from GVK, which I have to say is definitely the most vibrant and definitely the most colorful of the bunch, even though that's not really saying much given the competition. The eyes are painted about the same as the, uh, the other ones, except it's not as glossy and the application itself uh, can be a bit hit or miss, especially on some other copies I've seen, but for this Kong, we actually have some nice applications that are kind of upgrade from the six inch finger being a bit more cross-eyed. Uh, for the teeth here, we actually have some uh, individually sculpted teeth. I would say the teeth are probably a bit painted the best on this one. Uh, it's because we have like the smaller type canines here and the open mouth, which has just the overall best expression, although not so much detail. I think this one has the better detail, but no, the nostril looks nicely painted and the whole like front side is one big spray. Not too much going on with the ears, but we do have a bit of more kind of like grayer spray. And for the brown, we have like a bit of a more darker, it looks almost like dark chocolate, if that makes any sense. So yeah, it definitely kind of taps into that color scheme. Here we have uh, some more like the ribs and uh, kind of like the uh, chest area where we have, uh, just kind of hearing this so I don't break the shoulder by accident. Uh, we have a bit more of like the paint kind of coming down here uh, with the silver, or the silver, the gray. And it's like kind of more of like a gray spray, although it's not, it's not as clean looking as it should be. Like it definitely bleeds over to the fur because like you can see the skin line where it meets the fur and it kind of goes over that. I'm not really a big fan of, especially when the six inch figure accomplishes that effect so much better. But we do have some of the painted scars, which for the first time we have like the additional scars that Godzilla gives him. Even though by this logic, he should be having like what, four or five rows of scars now? But whatever, uh, continuity aside, this looks, again, all rightly painted. Wish it was sculpted in, but that's okay. Should be worth noting, I have a few nicks on the brow, I forgot to mention. Uh, but again, looks fine. Let's talk about the Beast Glove. The Beast Glove is actually, again, really well sculpted, and I do like how well it is detailed. Uh, we have a bit more of, like, the kind of paneling, like the gears, which are pretty well reflective, silver, paintish. And unlike the original six inch version, we also we also have paint on the inside of the arm, which is also nice. We, we had like the painted straps are painted silver, then we have like all the way around where it's painted yellow. This little part where it's just painted silver, this little gear that's painted silver. And uh, overall, again, it just looks really well done. Like nice little, what, what may have you, uh, straps there. I don't know why I didn't think of the word straps. But of course for the gauntlet itself, nice kind of like, vibrant yell it's not as vibrant as the six inch version but it's still really good on its own and because it's like a much scaled up figure the detail really lends itself because the six inch figure was already like detailed this is definitely like the most detailed i would say oh uh, here we have like some more like the fur patterns here on him and you can just kind of see like how well detailed like there is because there's really like barely any places where they like intentionally smoothened out minus like maybe here where they like intentionally did that just to smooth out the articulation a bit. And we do have some nice like uh, feet paint and arm, uh, sorry, uh, hand paint, which are the correct color this time. So sheer paint would definitely be the best on this one. Again, I'll cover that in just a sec. I think it's the only Kong that doesn't have the um, hollow or has the hollowed out feet. Just to double confirm. Yep, uh, only Kong to have hollowed out feet. There we go. And also uh, has, again, the bolt holes again. Yay. Um, take it or leave it. Monkey booty. And, uh, yeah, more of the fur patterns. And uh, let's just, I think that's kind of, like, relatively about it. Because even though he's whole, he has, like, two open hands, he can't really use anything. So, realistically, it's just kind of down to who did it the best. And in my personal opinion... Uh, focusing the camera in, let's bring the whole like set back. There you go. My personal opinion, it's him, straight up. While it is true that the the Skull Island Kong has, in my personal opinion, the best consistency when it comes to the sculpt, because I will say the torso feels a bit more mellow than the arms do, as far as sheer amount of detail. It, it's just that's really not enough. 
And even though it technically would have the best scar, like the best looking scars, it again just doesn't really matter when you also got this thing, which has all of the paint and a good pose. Because this technically has like all the things that these two don't. An accurate color, even though this is kind of accurate, it's actually decently accurate, but this looks most spot on to its movie. Actually, I think I just kind of heckled him, whatever. It looks the best. There you go. Regardless of accuracy, in my opinion, this looks the best. A nice darker base with a lighter coat of color. I will say that just overall from an aesthetic appearance, it definitely looks the best. And even though these two, well, mainly him, he tries his best. He didn't really try at all. Like, let's be 100% real here. It's, it's just solid black versus light gray and dark sorry light brown and dark gray versus dark brown light gray and a mixture of other colors just in my personal opinion i think that the gvk so gxk kong wins this next up we're going right to articulation and <laughs> i don't think this really requires any sort of exclamation but let's just go through it so first up is kong 2017 he has a head rotation, which is not on a ball joint or hinge, unlike the six inch version, which was on hinge. So it can only really turn left and right. I will say it's probably the most fluid swivel, although it doesn't really sound fluid, trust me, it actually is, it like flows really nicely. For the shoulders, we have basic swivels, so you can kind of go up and down like that. No in and out, nothing at the elbow, but we do have a wrist swivel, and it is like that on both sides. For the hips, unlike the six inch version, we have um, basically unlimited 360 uh, swivels, so you can pretty much go all the way around with them. As you can see there. It's nicely done. And uh, we have some uh, swivels here at the feet, which I should also add, uh, <laughs> definitely uh, don't really add a whole lot as far as like sheer posability goes. But there, it's that's the uh, 2017 Kong. And I probably just made him impossible for him to balance correctly because unfortunately one foot is standing farther than the other. Thankfully, this Kong is at a neutral stand so I don't have to worry about him. So um, for his articulation, the 2021 Kong, a head swivel. And when I first got mine, this guy was incredibly stiff. Like, you want to talk about stiff? This is like almost NECA Godzilla 2001 atomic blast out of the box stiff. Go back to my original unboxing if you haven't watched it, but whatever. Uh, swivel for the head, swivels for the shoulders. They can go all the way around. Swivels for the wrists, same thing on both sides. Uh, swivels for the hips, so you can kind of go all the way around like that. And swivels for the feet, trying to only move the foot. And it's like that on both sides. So overall, for the 2021 Kong, pretty much the same thing you're going to be getting with the 2017 Kong. Playmates decided to say, screw this, we're dialing this sucker up to 11. And what do we get? A ball jointed head. This should automatically tell you where the articulation is going at now, but we do have a swivel here and we do have a ball joint. Granted, it's not a super unlimited ball joint like you see with NECA, SH Monster Arts, and Haya, but it's still great to see this sort of articulation on a Kong figure. Swivel hinge for the shoulders so we can go up about that far, down about that far, and rotate all the way around. Swivel hinges for the elbow, this elbow. So we can go in about that far, hold on, oh crap, uh, straighten out about that far, and can rotate basically all the way around, swivel hint, sorry, swivel for the wrist, this shoulder, we can uh, go up about that far, down about that far, can rotate all the way around, this elbow, we can hinge in about that far, and go, go out of that, about that far, and there's no rotation here or here, legs, we can go up about that far, down about that far can rotate and if you bend it like this we can kind of go to the split and we can hinge with the knee out about that far and in about that far no there's no swivel at the foot 
but I think the knee, the knee and the leg articulation more than make up for it. So by a mere landslide, the giant 2021 Kong already wins this. Cause like this guy's got more articulation and more range debatably in his arms and legs alone than these two have in their whole bodies. That's how much of a slam dunk this is.